Hey, business building warrior, it's your buddy, Jim. Today's episode, we've got a guest who's done a little bit of everything. He's an entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, raised on a farm and had a Christmas tree business where he would take Christmas trees and from the United States and drive through Canada, take them all the way up to Alaska and sell them for Christmas. How interesting is that? But he eventually wound up selling on Amazon. And in 2020, which was his first full year of selling, he sold about $600,000 of product at a healthy margin. He tells us his numbers today. In 2021, he's aiming for a million. He's not sure if he'll get there or not. Here we are a little over halfway through the month, or I should say approaching halfway through the year of 2021. And uh, he's aiming for a million. Not sure if he'll get there, but his business is certainly growing. And he's got about 400 products that he's selling on a regular basis after being a student of our replens model, which you hear us talk a lot about. He's a proven Amazon course student. Um, he's coming to our live event as well in Tampa in July. Theprovenconference.com is the website for that. Hundreds of listeners to this show, as well as your fellow business building warriors in the Facebook group, which there's a link to. It's a free Facebook group at silentgym.com. Click over there. You'll see a link to our group. Join us if you're not in there yet. But he's coming to that. He's in the Facebook group. Just another great story from another great fellow business building warrior in our community who's built an incredible business using the simple strategies that we teach around here. So if this podcast ever feels repetitive to you, well, that's a good thing because I don't see a lot of other podcasts out there. I actually don't see any out there where show after show after show after show is good people who've built great businesses using simple time-tested proven strategies. That's what we do here. Uh, this guy has a military background, a military career, so I thanked him for his service as well. He's on the tail end of that. Just a really good guy. So have fun hanging out with Mr. Dave Smith and I today. I think you're going to enjoy this episode. As always, if you don't mind, please pass this around, silentgym.com, share it with friends, post it on Facebook, say, hey, go check out this podcast. I think you'll like it. To someone who could use a little extra income at a low risk entry point with a proven system that works. You know anyone like that that could use that? Send them our way. Just send them to our podcast. You've done your job. And that's your way of paying us back for the time and effort and energy that goes into making this show. So God bless you, business building warrior. We're going to jump over and meet Dave now. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Enjoy the show. So Dave, welcome to the show. It's great to be here. It's good to have you, man. Let's get into your story. I'd love to hear it. Well, it, uh, I guess initially it started back in 2001 or 2004 when my daughter was born. I was, on, uh, I was looking for a way to raise some money to invest for her. I figured if I could get a few thousand bucks in an investment account the day she's born, you know, she would never have to put anything in. So I started selling golf balls on eBay and I found a, I found a good source, but eventually I made about 50, sold about $50,000 worth Wow! over the course of a summer, made about $8,000, but my supplier cut me off and then they took over the, and started selling them. So Your that kind of, gotcha. I was going to say, were you uh, like paying a golf course to go dive in their pond? I know some guys was, do that. <laughs> and then one of the, I didn't make a lot of money because I had to, buy them from Florida and they'd ship them gotcha. up north. And, but I, at that time I was living in a hotel through my job and I had at any one time, five, 6,000 golf balls in my room. Wow. So the staff, the staff didn't like that too much, but the things entrepreneurs do, man, I love yeah. it. I, I did that. What a visual. That's the best I could, you know, that was the only warehouse I could have at the time. So, yeah. But then I, uh, I did that for a while that didn't turn out so well. And I bounced around doing a few other things. And then in 2014, I, I, I used to sell Christmas trees in Alaska. It was a family business that we had. Live, live trees. Yep. Every year we'd go up, we'd ship up Christmas trees from our farm and then go sell them in Alaska. So we ran a retail lot. And Why? Was, we don't have to dive too deep in this, but I'm thinking in Alaska, everyone's just like, you know, surrounded by nature and go get a tree yourself you were they're not, trees they're not nice Alaska. trees <laughs> you know they're not they're not pretty trees so they don't have pretty trees up there yeah they're i got you that. so you so, grew the, where were you growing the pretty trees in minnesota so you take them from minnesota to alaska that's a haul man oh yeah it, and it's a big chunk of change to get them there so 
Wow. You don't, it's a great business, but one of the problems is you have limited, you can only sell what you brought up with you. Yeah. yeah. So on a good year, if you ran out a few days early, you're going, oh, I ran out of, you know, I could have sold a lot more. But then other like times, selling on Amazon in Q4. <laughs> it evens out, but yeah, it's like you either buy a little bit too much or a little bit too much, uh, too little of just about everything in Q4. Yeah. But it's it's a really physical job, and I'm basically out for two months of the year where I can't do anything else. Right, I'm stuck in Alaska, and there's. You know, I'm loving your journey. Lot. You're a do what it takes kind of guy, man. I can't wait to and, get to the modern day part of your story. And it was. And my dad has been doing this since 1962. Wow. And I did, I started doing it, helping him out just for college money. And it was, it ended up Give one me of those numbers. things. I, I love oh, business models. Like what would you put into the trees and what would you get out? Like, what would you make in that? I'm guessing it's like a, what, a six week period. It was yeah, five to six weeks. We could, uh, you know, I walked away with more money than anything else I was doing. I could walk away with twenty five thousand dollars in a month's work, right? As and that was just as an employee. Sure. So then, eventually, I took over the business, and I took over the business when my dad turned eighty and retired, and I ran it for about five years. And I just it wasn't my passion, so I kind of yeah. And COVID kind of I shut it down this in twenty twenty because COVID was. Maybe just kind of making too. things complicated. So. Oh, for sure. Wow. Okay. But so one of the, you, you were doing this up until recently on top of everything else you've got going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's one of those things that we always did. So I just, it was kind of. Almost like part of the family tradition. It sounds yep, like. It was. And it, everybody in the family worked on the farm usually, but I was the youngest. So I had to be there. Yeah. I started working on the farm when I was 12. You know, if all I know about you and we stopped right now, Dave, is what you've told me so far, that you're the kind of guy that would put 6,000 golf balls in this hotel room to, to make a little extra money for his, for his baby. And you got this family business that you've done together and you lived on a farm and you made some money putting your hands to work. And you're a safe bet in my book. I'm sold. Whatever yeah, you're I'm selling, gonna, I'm buying. I'm going <laughs> to get it done. I'm going to find a done kind of guy, man. And, but, and plus anyone raised on a farm, the lessons of entrepreneurship from being on a farm are just, yeah. they, they don't, they don't stop. And my dad was pretty hardcore. He was, uh, he's a no nonsense guy. So yeah, as, as was mine, man. I, I'll just I, say I dug a lot of holes for no reason <laughs> as punishment. <laughs> dig me a post hole. There's no fence going here, dad. I know. <laughs> dig it anyway. <laughs> Usually it was a big hole and then you go fill it in. <laughs> but oh, so, I, you know, I grew up that way and it, my dad's always been the hands-on. So that, I th that's one of my problems with all of this is that I'm in the mix all the time. So, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to learn that, but I was, I've been in the military for the last 30 years as well. On top of this, Thank so you I take serve. all my leave to go to Alaska and sell trees. So it was kind of the, the way I was going. And I, the writing was, on the wall in about 2014 that maybe I better start something else. Another side gig just to, for, for a safety net. Yeah, sure. Multiple streams of income, man. I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of that yeah. for sure. And we were, and since there's a lot of downtime on the Christmas tree lot, I was going looking for something to read and I found silent sales machine back in 2014. So I read it. I was like, Oh, this Amazon deal is not too bad. So I, I started up 2014 or 2015, probably January. Was doing RA, OA, kind of moderate success. And then it was kind of, my wife and I like to travel a lot. So we decided, I was just, I was going, how can I earn more miles on my credit card <laughs> so we can fly first class or even just get free tickets? And that's kind of the the reason behind the Amazon thing at that time too. And I, and I found some backpacks that I could buy and they're expensive. So I could, you know, it was racking up my credit card as getting lots of points. Right. So you were flipping them for profit yeah, and so. getting the points. It's like a bonus, right? Yeah. Gotcha. And there, there was, it was good profit too. It was, so I was like, wow, this is working out. And I sold probably $200,000 worth of backpacks 
over the course of six months. So I was like, wow, this is great. Well, then I get my supplier cut me off. And so backpacks are gone. And just about that time, merch by Amazon came out. And I got an invite somehow because I was in the Amazon program, I guess. Right. And I really started focusing on that because I've been printing T-shirts on the side since high school. Just something. Oh, you had your own, uh, your yeah. own press? Yep. And I just one of those things I learned how to do. So I kept doing it. That only I, makes sense, man. I mean, that's where I would have gone next from golf balls to Christmas trees to yeah. the T-shirts. I'm, I'm just done it all. <laughs> <laughs> you got to write a book, man. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, I really focused on merch for a long time. And I, I'm in the 100,000 tier now. Wow. But I don't, I don't upload shirts anymore. I haven't uploaded a shirt in probably four or five months. But it's, I, I probably make three to $4,000 a month off of that now, just in royalties okay. from existing shirts. Okay. I've, so I've good, heard, you know, just as a general statement that merch is a pretty rough grind to get into some kind of stable level income where you're, you have yeah. three or $4,000. That's nothing to, you know, that's nothing to blow off, but that's, that's not like getting rich. And that sounds no, like a lot of work no, to get to that many designs. I, you know, it's I have 20,000 active designs right now and it's, but I hired, you know, I had to hire people to make them because I just couldn't keep up and yeah. you got to upload them yourself. Yeah. Because you yeah. can't outsource that. And yeah. We stopped being real excited about that model about a year after it started. And, yeah. and that's been like four or five years ago that I've heard any like really exciting success stories come out of it because it just got so swamped so fast. Yeah. And now you guys love that there's still people who got in and they're, they're still making get putting some cash in the bank every month. I hadn't talked to one in some time. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah it's a, it's a nice little paycheck. And then Christmas time, you know, it bumps up makes sure. 10 or 12,000 in December. So yeah. Q4. Good. Yeah. Sales go crazy on everything. So it's one of those things I don't have to think about anymore. It's just there. That's awesome. But off of that, I took a lot of those designs and started some Shopify stores and I have a local printer that does everything. So I never touch a shirt. I don't, I have one customer that I print shirts for anymore and they order a couple thousand shirts a year. So it's a nice little profit on that one. But otherwise, I don't want to touch shirts anymore. It's, gotcha. It's just so, a grind. So what, what's your main business model now? What, where are you? Now I'm doing replens. You're a replens guy. I, this January 2020, I, got, I came back from Alaska. It was my January 2000 or December 2019. I came back from Alaska. Went down to Florida quick for a warm up trip. On the way home, we kind of went. The tr again, we hit some travel but or problems. So I was like, we really need to get up to where we're fl flying first class. You know, just one of those first world problems going on. So I went. You know, I'm going to bring back the Amazon thing, start earning some miles, and that's what I right away January I started up. And I was doing all right, you know, it was three, 4,000 a month, nothing big, but then I, uh, the pack you were, I saw something on the Facebook page about going to the conference in Boca. So I signed up and I paid for the VIP ticket. And then, uh, you gave me a call right after I signed up. So, and talked about the pack course. So I got into the pack course and the first one I watched was replens. So the next day I was out shopping and I was like, just walked by one item, scanned it because I didn't have any of the tools yet. So I was just scanned it, went, yeah, we'll try it. Well, I ended up selling 12,000 units of that in 2020. <laughs> My first replens and I still sell it. I mean, that's phenomenal. Yeah. So I tell people I mean, that they're everywhere. Maker, is that it, one. These things really are everywhere. Is it just a single unit or is it like a three pack or? Uh... It's, it started as a single unit and then now I have eight different listings on it. That what I are those, found, so. When you say different listings, you're talking like a two pack, a three pack, is yeah, it part one, of a bundle? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And there's different, it's a food item. So there's different flavors. Gotcha. 
Yeah. I started with one flavor and then it kind of just yeah. went off. Now I have about eight, eight yeah. varieties. Of- how, and how many other sellers are on those list, listings with you? I'm sure it varies, but on in, average. You know, in 20, the start of 2020, there was probably five or six of us and the price was up higher. So there was a lot of money made in the beginning, but now it's kind of, there's, there's now probably nine to 10 on it, but some of the bigger guys are throwing thousands of units in. Right. So I got you. I had a few months here where it kind of, it really lagged. Yeah. Yeah. Now I've been throwing, I've been sending in hundreds every week and just fighting with them on the price. I mean, I'm making a dollar maybe, but. Yeah. But when I can sell 200 in a day. Exactly. That adds up. It's, you know, it's just the labor involved. Yeah. And you, if you can pay someone else to do that. Yeah. yeah. You love finding those. Well, and the, and the point I'm making and asking that question is some people think succeeding on Amazon is finding a unique product that no one else can get that's only mine. And then I market it and sell a bunch of it. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing to do. And the stuff we teach will lead you to that if you want to do it someday. But there's a whole lot of money to be made in the stuff that people are buying like crazy right now that's sitting on retail shelves at a price far less than it's selling for like crazy on Amazon. Yeah. Learning to find those items. Yeah, your price is going to fluctuate. You might be in the mix with a few other sellers. On, on some of our top products, there are 30, 40, 50 other sellers. But it's flying out the door so quickly. If anybody starts to play in that like, you know, low price, their stuff sells instantly. Yeah. <laughs> so those of us who have a higher price, just wait for it, that, that dip to rise again. Like here goes our stuff out the door now. Yeah. And one, one of the things I've found is that Amazon rewards selling, you know, they want you to sell. Yes. So I can, I use this one item as kind of my velocity item. I don't, yeah. if I make a dollar, I make a dollar. If I make a little less, that's fine. Yeah. But I'm selling, I'm getting two to 300 sales a day off of this. Right. And it's you know, there's bringing a- in other mi- items to the mix. So it, I, every time I do sell a bunch of it, I get a bigger bump on my other stuff. Yes. Amazon rewards that velocity in many ways. It, it can help your IPI score. For people who don't know what that is, I'm not going to go into it right now. It's a metric. It's almost like a credit score that Amazon gives every group, every uh, seller, I should say. So your IPI score is going to go up if you've got just one or two items are just flying out the door constantly, even at just barely above break even. But it it kind of, it boosts every other ASIN that you're selling as well. Yeah. It just kind of like, oh, this seller is rocking. So let's put all their stuff to the front of the line, right? Yeah. And, and another way that benefits you too is if you're doing some merchant fulfill and you have some orders that... Uh, you don't send on time or you run out or you made a mistake or something and that it, it, it starts to put your account at risk. Like, hey, you know, you got to get your deliverability rate up here. You got to get your, well, if you're selling an inexpensive item that's just flying out the door, that covers up, covers up a whole bunch of mistakes. Mm-hmm. So your your percent stays right up there, 99%, oh, right. even if you're making a bunch of little mistakes, you know, any given yeah. month, right? So having that product, that you can rely on, that you can just go out and grab a bunch of. And even if it's a break even, like, okay, we're going to ship 50 of these today and we're going to make 10 cents each. But you know what? It's going to help boost every other part of our business. It's a good thing to have in your back pocket. That's it. That's I mean, you got you to be well capitalized to do that because... Sure. You know, it, I spend thousands every week on this item. Right. And this is just one item. How many ASINs are you selling? I have a total of 870 ASINs that I sell against right now, I got about 400 active. So it, it rotates, you know, I sure. heard you talk about it where you got to go back and look at them. Sure. I have some that just died off and you come back and they're making 200% ROI all of a sudden. Yeah. Cause everybody, it, everybody left the listing because it died off so fast. Right. All right. Well, so, you know, yeah. one person comes in, tanks the price, everyone joins them. No one's making any money. Everyone walks away. Yeah. You so I go back in and 30 days later and you got yeah. it all to yourself. <laughs> so it works out good. Yeah. But I, I found on the one item that I sell a bunch of is I'm at, I'm at the lowest price with the guy who usually has a thousand units in stock, but I sell more now at $6 more than the lowest price 
when I'm selling a bunch. So if say it's 1899 is the low price, I'll still sell 10, 20 a day that are at 24.99 for some reason. Because I have my repricer set. The buy box is rotating pretty friendly there for you. Is that what's yeah. happening? Yeah, and I think that's because I, you know, I've sold probably eighteen thousand units since I started on this one. So, right, I'm right. I'm attached in Amazon's mind to as a good seller of yes. this product. So, part of the you know the the buyback the buybacks formula is something that I don't think anyone completely you know, people claim that they know what's going on, but there's so many factors going on and there's kind of like Google search algorithm. Like there's so many switches that yeah. you can flip and change it. But one of the things you just pointed out, and I've heard it from other sellers is if you've got a lot of momentum on a product that you're selling a lot of and someone else comes in significantly lower than you, you can kind of stay where you are and that, that buy box can rotate pretty wide. It can go all the way from 18 bucks up to 25. And, yep. you know, and that's where, what I've seen is a big swing on that. It's, it's mostly at night. Yeah, it's, at the end of the it, night, I hit these bigger profits. Right. Some people say, "Oh, well, you got to stay within two percent, or you got to stay within five percent." I've seen some twenty percent yeah. swings in the buy box rotation. And something else to keep in mind too is the inventory spread out all over the country. For example, and if you're the one that's the closest to the customer, you're the one that has a handful of units in that region, <laughs> right next to where the customer's buying from. They're going to give you the buy box a lot of times. Yeah over that customer that they're going to have to ship it from California to the East Coast. They, they're not going to give that guy the buy box, right? So having enough inventory in there that it can be spread out gives you an advantage too. And that's, I've learned my lesson on the, I got a, I ran out of a lot of inventory in the fourth quarter. And it really, it kind of, it really hurt us because I was expecting a much bigger Q4 than I had, but all of my products were stuck in, basically shipping, waiting to get processed in. So, Oh, well, that's a matter of sending stuff in earlier. Yeah, and, and I, I just kind of, I missed the window, I think. Do you do just any, uh, what, well, when are you going to send it in this year to put a cap on that discussion? I'm going like, to try. What? The latest is maybe the first week of October. Yeah. That's if it's latest. something that you want to truly maximize for Q4, yeah, that's about the latest is... You know, be thinking really hard about it August, September and be ready to ship that stuff out early October. Yeah. And that way you are going to get in on the peak of the Christmas uh, rush. But you can also merchant fulfill, which is what I was going to ask you about next. Do you do any of your own shipping? We do a lot of it. We have what a lot. percentage of your business, uh, like any given day, let's say you sell five, uh, what do you, at your level, what are you around 150 units a day or something like that? What do you around there, yeah. I probably sell 20 to 30 units a day on, Merchant fulfilled. Okay. So around 100 through FBA and 20 yeah. to 30 merchant fulfilled. And it's the one, the one main product I sell merchant fulfilled has a, the expiration dates always, the supply and get the expiration dates too close to ever send it in. Ah, there's an interesting yeah, so. topic. I love this subject because there's, we're always making decisions along these lines myself. Yeah. So what's the tightest expiration date window you're willing to send merchant fulfilled? And maybe I should explain while you're thinking about your answer, Dave, I should explain what I'm saying there. If you send something in FBA, remind me, Dave, maybe you know, I'm thinking it's, is it 90 days Amazon wants to see? It's 125. 100, it's, it's a long time. Yeah. They want, they want that thing to be able to sit on the shelf for quite a while before they sell it. And the customer still has plenty of time to use it, yeah. right? But if you're sending it in merchant fulfill, which means you're shipping it yourself, well, as long as the customer doesn't complain, Amazon's not going to even know, right? So yeah. it's kind of up to you what, you what risk you're willing to take. And I don't know, even know if Amazon has a policy. I probably should know as the host of a podcast that's all about this stuff. But do you happen to know? Do they have a rule I, about... I haven't seen anything on it. I, I try to keep it within 30 days so that... Yeah. At least you want to give the customer at least 30 days to use the product. Yeah. Right. And then if, if they do order a bunch, because sometimes I've had people order, you know, 30 units and have it merchant fulfilled. Right. And they have to ship to Hawaii usually or something like that. Sure. Then I make sure that I go get a fresh batch. Sure. I, then I know, I mean, if you're getting 30, you're either handing them out or right. you're getting a supply. So I try to. Because there's some incredible, if you're willing to do some of your own shipping, 
and uh, we're putting together some content right now on this subject. And there's a there's a service we use called Integra Ship. I'll stick a link to it in the show notes today. We've actually got a vested interest in the success of this company, but it taps into some of the best shipping because you can't always use you can't use Amazon. If you're sending product to Amazon, you can use Amazon's shipping process. But if you're sending stuff to a customer direct, you should want to shop around like, all right, what's the best price? Mm-hmm. And Integra Ship's really good for that. So I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but we'll stick it in have, the show notes. I, I think this I is signed a little up plug. for them last yeah. year sometime, but... See if it can save you some money. Uh, yeah. But so, so you're sending this stuff yourself, but what this opens up, and I don't know if we've ever talked about this before, but um, back when we were committed to only FBA, we only want to send FBA for our replens business we would pass over a lot of stuff that was like, well, that, that expires in, in eight weeks. So, you know, we can't, we can't do that. Even though the ROI is tremendous, even though it's selling like crazy, yeah. I'm talking like, you know, snack foods and, you know, snack cakes and that kind of stuff. You know, the, the stuff that you can never find with more than 60 days of an expiration date out there because the shelf life is only 60 days, right? <laughs> but you can sell that stuff merchant fulfilled and do really, really well. If yeah. you're going to do the shipping, right? That's like, I'm I'm in my we have a warehouse now. Right. And I'm here almost every day. So that's where you're at now? Yep. How much how much room do you have? It's fifteen hundred square foot warehouse, probably eleven hundred square feet of actual warehouse space. Gotcha. Where what's your team look like? It's ninety percent me. And then I have a couple of buddies that come in and help. One comes in one to two days a week and the other one's here. He ends up being here about four days a week now. So. Gotcha. Pretty flexible. And I have my daughter on shopping duties. So Nice. I love it, man. Hey, give me some numbers too. But I don't want to forget to do that. Yep. For, well, 2020, we ended at about 600,000. Nice. I was pretty happy for my first year. Yeah. I mean, that was, it was one of those. The intent was never to get like this, but once COVID hit, I was like, well, I might as well try to make some money off of this because, so then I really focused on it and got the numbers up there. uh, And what was your margin on that 600? We did uh, 16% profit margin and about 41% ROI. Okay. You know, I was, for the first nine months of 2020, I was doing this out of my garage. And initially it started out, I couldn't park in there. And then it moved over where my wife couldn't park in the garage anymore. So I was, I was really trying the low hanging fruit where let's just put a sticker on it, get it out the door. Not too much in the prep area. Not, I did some poly bagging, but not, not a whole lot. Cause it was, it was just hard to do. Cause I'm in Minnesota and it's, you know, it's March and it's, 30 degrees, 20, 30 degrees out. And I'm in my garage trying to do all this and it's just not working. Wow. Well. Yeah. So eventually we, uh, we've now that I have the warehouse, I got a heat tunnel, picked up an old bakery that was getting rid of our, their shrink wrapping machine. So I picked it up cheap. Now we can do a lot more of that. So we're, we're really moving up to the higher margin items. Nice. A super short interruption before we get back to the content. I just wanted to let you know about a really cool deal that our friends at Helium 10 have put together, helium10.com, discount code SSMR, as in silent sales machine radio, 50% off your first month on a robust suite of tools used by over a million Amazon sellers around the world. Go check it out. Many users in our community swear by Helium 10. I love the data that they put out. They've put a lot of time and energy into creating a robust suite of tools that can really help you with your business, making good decisions on what to buy. Helium10.com, discount code SSMR. Now that I have the warehouse, I got a heat tunnel, picked up an old bakery that was getting rid of their shrink wrapping machine. So I picked it up cheap. Now we can do a lot more of that. So we're really moving up to the higher margin items. Nice. So, so what are you looking to do this year, 2021? We're hoping to, I would love to hit a million, but uh, 800,000 is more realistic. Q4 could be crazy, man. You never know. And that's last year I was counting on Q4 to be much better than it was, but I, it mm. was 
a tactical error on my part where at one point I had 3,000 items sitting in limbo waiting to get checked in, you know, so it was... Yeah, yeah. They so just, January was good because everything showed up. Right. A lot of people had a good January 2021, including us. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of stuff got checked in and people were still at home shopping. Yeah. And I had, you know, I had a couple of... And we're doing LTL shipment now, pallets. Nice. Okay. Uh, LTL is less than truckload for the, yeah. is the, but LTL means you're wrapping a whole bunch of boxes on a pallet and you can get your per pound shipping expense down. I've heard as low maybe, as like 12, now. 15 cents a pound. Yeah. And we're, I'm shipping a lot of heavy things now. So it's still, I'm in the 30 cent range, but mm -hmm. you can make a lot more money off the heavy items because not a lot of for people sure. are doing it. What, when you say heavy items, what are you talking about? More. Like you always talk about green beans. I'm doing 12 packs, of stuff like that. That's a little heavier, a little mm -hmm. bulkier. Right. But I can load up a bunch of pallets and boxes and get a good shipping rate where it doesn't cost that much, you know. It's, nice. So. Yeah, that's something we're definitely looking into. We're not doing it ourselves yet, but we're looking into it for sure. Uh, you can well, save I, yourself a lot of money, make a lot of extra margin. I went that way because I was... Kind of in the summer of 2020, I was shipping out 120, 130 boxes a week, UPS. Mm -hmm. You know, that was, ended up being 1200 bucks. Right. And I was like, Jesus, you know, this is really expensive. And my first LTL shipment was 60 some boxes of $110. Right. I was like, what? Yeah. You know, that would have been a $700 day or bill for UPS to come get that. Wow. That, that's a really good. I, I love the numbers there. You, instead of spending seven, six or 700 bucks, you spend a hundred dollars. Yeah. By putting it all on a pallet and wrapping it in some shrink wrap. And we bought a, we had to buy a forklift, sure. a manual one. It's a, you pump it up with your foot. It's, it's yeah. horrible. The kind you see getting wheeled around Walmart. Yeah. And this, this one will go up nine feet. So, cause we got to load everything in the back of that truck. Mm, gotcha. You know, it was a fourteen hundred dollar purchase, but we say we made that money back within a week. Yeah, by not using UPS, and that's a great so tip. You got to look at it that way, and it's it's much easier to do LTL shipments for us because you know, putting two labels on and just weighing every box. We still have to weigh every box because we don't have a big scale, but so it just it created the workflow a little better for us. Yeah, and you still have to keep each box under 50 pounds. Yeah. Hmm. And like today we have a pallet going out that's not very tall, but it's 1,200 pounds. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, we, we pack it tight, but nothing's over 50 pounds, but there's just a lot of... Do you right find that, that, they, uh, pounds. that the pallets get checked in a little slower than a UPS shipment of the same? Or it, has it been about the same for you? What's your experience been there? We've had anywhere from... 25 days to three. Mm -hmm. it, just, it, it varies wildly. And I, I talked to my shipping rep or the company that usually picks up our stuff was, uh, I just happened to be on the phone with them because there was a little glitch in the pickup. And they said, Amazon only accepts full truckloads. Mm -hmm. So if your pallet, if you have one pallet and goes on a truck and that's a 53 footer, you yeah. have to wait till that thing gets full before yeah. they can even deliver it to the warehouse. It's all about the timing on where you are, the truck. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's not FIFO either. It's FILO. So first in, last out. You're all the way at the front waiting for that thing to fill. And you're going to be the last one off when it gets so there. We, yeah. We had one. We had about two weeks mm -hmm. where we didn't have any. You know, we were running out of everything because our pallets were stuck. Right. But then all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden there's five shipments all get checked in within three, yeah. four days. Yeah. And then it just, as a general rule, I think it's just send at least a little bit every day, kind of as, the, you know, it's yeah. hard to beat that strategy. There's no other real good way to play the game besides just kind of keep that trickle flowing. You don't want to send like one huge shipment a month because that one huge shipment a month could get stuck behind the next month's shipment. Yep. And you're waiting on two shipments now. And and that, nothing we've to pivoted sell. from that. We're, you want to keep that trickle flowing. We're doing three shipments a week now. Yeah. 
because yeah. it takes we're getting so many pallets in that we don't have room to operate hardly so we have to get got to get them out if we did it once a week we'd never we wouldn't be able to walk yeah so we're just right. cranking them out now as fast <laughs> as we can and, sounds like our warehouse last q4 yeah, stuff was just coming in and kept coming in and pouring we're like where are we going to put this stuff where are we going to walk <laughs> and that's yeah that's the issue we have is because we got i've got five pallets right in there now and it's it's just it we're waiting the truck is supposed to be here within a, probably an hour or so but yeah yeah then well, as soon I, as that they're out we'll get start doing the other ones and I, I appreciate you spending some time with us man for sure because I, I know there's a lot of other things you could do and you're you're a guy who takes how he spends his time very seriously you have to be uh, but you've built an incredible business, man. So, so, so is this your primary income now? It is now as of April 24th. Well, that's I not was, that uh, long ago. No, I, uh, that's what, like, I guess I've been in the military for 30 years and that's where I've been working full time most of the time. Are you talking like just a few days ago as we're recording this? Yep. They, well, uh, thank you for your service and congratulations, man. So you retired officially, huh? I'm not retired yet, but I'm not getting paid anymore. <laughs> I'm I'm a reservist, but I've been doing active duty. I'm in a weird program where I do nine months of active duty every year, and then I get I took three months off to do my Christmas trees. Gotcha. So it worked out perfect. Okay. And it just I'm I hit a rank where it's really difficult to pay from. I, I promoted myself out of a job, basically. So I hear you. I got the pay is not worth what I'm doing for them anymore. So okay, they okay. just kind of they the funding dried up and they said see you later. But you got to stay. I have to stay another year and a half just as a reservist. So I got you. So it's not a major commitment. You're not officially retired yet, but no. yeah. But this but is your was, main income now. My Thank main you. income was gone all of a sudden. So wow. So you're all in. Yeah. How are you feeling about that? It was probably the happiest day I've had in a long time. So, <laughs> I mean, for you, everybody I work with is like, "What are you still doing here? We know you don't want to be here." I'm like, "Well, I, yeah, but it's a, it's a steady paycheck." Yeah, yeah. And, and you're you're all into the Amazon biz now. Oh yeah, and I for the last year that's been my main focus. Yeah. Mentally, emotionally, all in well before yep. now. So let's talk about finding new products as we start to wrap this one up. You've got 800 products, 400 of which you're like happy about right now. How are you finding new products? Give the new listeners a few tips and strategies. If, I uh, do everything online. Hmm. So I, and it all stems from, I was kind of struggling for a while finding anything. And I was listening to one of the podcasts and you just mentioned that on Keepa, go down to the stats and then triple it. Yeah. And I'd never heard that. I mean, I'd been doing this. So I went, huh. And then thinking about that and another one, you said, you know, go to page six. You know, don't just look at the first page, go all the way to page six. Well, that I heard that on maybe a Friday. By Monday morning, I had found about 150 new <laughs> replens. <laughs> okay. Some people's ears just perked up. What? What do you do? What do you do? Well, so we say it, go to page six. You keep scrolling down. Yep. Just, and so I, you know, I bring up Walmart and I'll just type in condiments or whatever mm -hmm. and look, go, okay, there's some ketchup and just type, search that on Amazon. And just start scrolling and you'll search that brand name. So search the brand name and start scrolling. Start, start there. On page four, there's going to be two bottles of that ketchup and a mustard you've never heard of, but you could find if you had to. Yeah. Selling for $29.94. You're like, all right, I could go find two bottles of ketchup and a bottle of mustard that looks like that yeah. for about eight bucks. Yeah. I and think I'm going to go try this one out. But you check Keepa first. Yep. Keep and you look how many times it's selling. It. And you said triple the statistic number. I, I just want to throw a little caveat in there, Dave, on that one. As long as the number's over 10, I've found you can pretty consistently triple. So if, it, yeah. if Keepa is saying, 
we think this product sells about 10 times a month. Well, that's probably pretty accurate. Any number lower than 10, Keepa is generally very accurate. But once you get over 10, you start getting into 13, 15, 18 drops a month, you can safely double or triple that number because okay. Keepa, remember, they only check every few hours. Yeah. Or in some cases, once a day. So it could sell several times between drops. Once it gets over that 15, 18, 20 mark, especially, you can double or triple that number and get a good feel for how many times that thing's selling. Have you found that to be pretty true? Pretty true because my best selling item is on Keepa. It's not that great. Right. You know, but it in those drops, it's probably selling a hundred times. Right. Each you time know, so it drops, it's sold. Right. It's, it, because Keepa isn't checking in real time. It doesn't, yeah. no one knows when a sale is made on Amazon except Amazon. It doesn't matter how much you pay for a tool. It doesn't know. No tool okay. knows. Amazon does not tell anybody unless you are the product owner and you're the only one selling it. That's the only way to know how many times a product sells. But Keepa gets closer than anybody else because yeah. every rank drop, it's telling us some information like, oh, at least one sold, maybe more because it's been six hours since it checked the last time. So like you said, you could sell 100 units in between a rank drop, rank change. And that I've had days where I, I, my biggest day was $6,800 hmm. and 5,000 of that was the one item. Wow. You know, so it's, it you can, that one pretty well, <laughs> you know, you can sell, you can sell easily sell a hundred in an hour on a, is there any private label potential in this niche product? You ever thought I've, about that? I've reached out to the manufacturer and they're not, no, no white they have label, a private, private label, label program, but they're not willing to, they know who I am, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So. I got you. Maybe a competitor. Out. What's that? Maybe a competitor. Yep. Would be interested. And that's what I'm looking around. I'm, that's one of the, we started, I started out doing just Target, Walmart and stores like that. But I picked up a, a wholesale grocer that delivers right to us now. Nice. And that's one of the things I wanted to tell everybody is make sure you tell everybody, you know, what you're doing. I mean, I was not shy about it. I had my garage door open all the time. My neighbors are like, what the heck is going on over there? And one day the neighbor right across the street finally came over. I mean, this is six months of watching me do this. He goes, Hey, yeah, uh, I just want to see what you're doing. But my brother has a distributor ship. And he supplies targets and Walmarts and all kinds and all these other home improvement stores. So he's like, I gave him your name and he's going to call you. <laughs> so he did call me and he's like, Hey, I set you up with a, an account at this just distribution company. Just give him a call, tell him what you want. That is an Ooh. awesome story. You know, because there's plenty of people that do this business that are asking questions like, well, if somebody sees me with 20 of the same item in my shopping cart, it's kind of awkward. I don't want anyone to know what I do. And how do I tell them, wait, what do I tell them I'm doing? You tell them that you resell products online and that you're yep. really good at it. And if they it know any products, their be bold about it, be excited about it. And the opportunities will find you. Yep. It reminds me of the Hebrew tradition, Dave, of last names. Have you ever heard us talk about that? Mm -hmm. The Hebrew tradition of last names. Like... They would name the guy who brings the water was named Wasserman. The guy who makes the gold jewelry is Goldstein, <laughs> you know, Silverstein. Yes, yeah, so you got yep. these names that sound like an occupation in the Hebrew tradition. Well, because you wore it boldly. You put it on your hat, you put it on the side of your car, you put it there, you're like, this is what we do, this is who oh, I yeah. am. That's how you approach this business and those opportunities will find you. I love that story. And then the neighbor right next to that neighbor was, I ran into him one day shopping and he saw my pallet full of stuff and he's, we were just joking around. And I said, said, yeah, I could really use a warehouse, you know, to help. He's like, let me call this guy. He goes, I got a friend that has a million square feet of warehouse spaces in this area. So he called him. The guy called me and said, Hey, I have one available right now. I'll meet nice. you there in 10 minutes. If you want to see it. And Boom, was done. That's so, so great. It's yeah. my neighbors who would never, I mean, we talk, but 
Yeah. They have no investment in this. They helped me out so much that. So that just phenomenal. make sure you tell everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. You never know who's going to, what connections they have. So. Great tips. Well, as I, as I told you before we started this episode, I'm on a bit of a timeline, man. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut this one off today. I think there's a bunch of other questions like that we could ask. Would you come back and give us another update? I want to hear how your 2021 winds up. And Will do. That's awesome, man. But congratulations on this new chapter. And you are a very interesting... You have a very interesting storyline. From golf balls to Christmas trees to, <laughs> to Amazon. I've done a lot of things, we'll say. <laughs> And I think a lot of us have. We've got that entrepreneurial spirit. We're just always looking for opportunities, ways to serve and grow and provide for our families and uh, you know, getting things done, man. Great story, Dave. It was really cool hanging out with you today, buddy. I, hey, are you coming to Tampa in July? I am. Awesome. You got my room? You got my flights? So. What's the website? Do you remember? Uh, she said, I don't know. Theprovenconference.com. The Proven Conference, yes. <laughs> there you go. I was going to let you do the plug, but I guess that's the host that. today. That's all right, man. No, so if you want to come meet Dave, uh, if you're listening to this before July 2021, get on there and get the dates. We're getting together hundreds of, hundreds of listeners to this podcast, a bunch of people from our Facebook group, and uh, come meet Dave. Tell him thanks for the great episode today. But uh, hey, man, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you, dude. You too. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll talk to the listeners for just a minute as we wrap this one up. Um, I hope you got some great tips today. I certainly did. You know, it, I, I've got a couple think boxes I got to check in my mind now. Stuff we should be could be doing at our warehouse, and uh, hopefully, you got a few good ideas and tips. Just like every episode, man, I just love getting to do what I get to do. And thank you for making that possible for me to get to hang out with cool people and have conversations about their business. If you weren't listening, I wouldn't get to do this. So thank you, and thank you also for spreading the word. If you're watching on YouTube, keep in mind a lot of our episodes aren't on YouTube. They're listen only at silentgym.com. You can go and see all the episodes, including the ones that didn't make it onto YouTube with great interviews like this and success stories from our communities, from our students and our course students. But God bless you, business building warrior. We're going to wrap this one up, but you know, we're in your corner. We're praying for you. We're here for you. We're rooting for your success. So stay in the fight, keep plowing forward. And if you're not in our Facebook group, why not? Go to silentgym.com, get in there, hang out with great guys like Dave and 65,000 other people who are building businesses around the world using the internet creatively. We're in your corner. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, before we go, just a quick thing. I wanted to remind you that Helium 10 has become a great sponsor of this show. They've got an offer exclusive for the audience, the listeners, the business building warriors of this community. If you go to helium10.com, and use the discount code SSMR, as in silent sales machine radio, you'll get the tool that's being used by over 1 million Amazon sellers at this point. They're actively tracking over 2 billion different products on Amazon at any given time, providing data and helping you make good decisions on what products you should and shouldn't sell, as well as an entire suite of products that help you run your entire Amazon business instead of piecing it together a little bit from here, a little bit from there. It's a great tool. Many, many coaches on our team use it, the content creators. I know that Nathan, our coaching director, swears by it as well. So we were very excited to bring them on as a sponsor. Again, Helium 10, discount code SSMR, and I'll take good care of you. Hey, God bless you, business building warrior. <laughs>